Okay, now let's try and work a couple of examples so we can make sure that we have these translations down pat. Now here's our first example. It says choose the function that matches the given graph. So we have our picture here of our graph and one of these equations matches this visual. Well, looking at our four choices here, three of them at least are square functions. One has an absolute value as its base. So if you know your library of functions, we can automatically knock this one out. Because remember, an absolute value function is that V-shaped function. The square function are these nice curved ones. All right. Now, so that's just by looking, just by knowing our library of functions, we could automatically knock that one out. Now, because this one is flipped over, remember our square function normally looks like this. That's our f of x equals x squared. Well, this one has been flipped over. And if you'll remember, flipping things about the x-axis um, is a reflection that we achieve by putting the putting the negative in front of the x. So here we have a positive x squared. We know that it can't be this one at all. We can knock that out to begin with. So now we're down to these two choices. Well, we have a negative in front of the x squared on both of them. The difference here is that this one we have a minus 6 inside the function and this one we have a positive 6 outside of the function. Well, here's where we really have to know our translations. Remember, when you add or subtract something outside the function is when it does the vertical shift, up or down. Inside the function is where we do the horizontal shifts, left and right. Now, if we were to take our x squared function, which normally looks something like this, and if we were to flip it over, now it becomes something like this instead. So in order for us to get this graph out of it, we had to take and raise that up six units. This is our vertical shift of six units. Now don't forget, you can always graph that on your calculator just to double check that you are um, getting the correct answer. Now one more here. This one says that we're going to write a function whose graph is the graph of y equals absolute value of x, but it's shifted to the left seven units. I'm kind of cutting that off there. Sorry about that. Okay, if we have um, something that starts out as the absolute value of x, well, absolute value of x is that graph that's that v-shaped graph that looks like this. If we're going to shift it to the left seven units, then what we're going to end up with is something that's moved over here and now looks something like this, where we've been shifted over seven units. Okay, it's a good idea to get that in your mind first so that you know what it is that you're looking for eventually. Okay, but now taking this, if we start off with the absolute value of x, we need to know, are we going to put that 7 inside the function or outside the function? So we have to know what our translations do. Inside the function moves things horizontally. So we know we're going to have to put our 7 inside this function with the x. And if you'll remember from your translations, horizontally is always the opposite of the way you think it should be. So if we're going to move left 7 units, you'd think that would be a minus 7, but it's actually going to be a plus 7. These, the horizontal translations always work um, different than you think they would. Now, before you say that that is the correct answer, which it is, take two seconds and graph it on your calculator. You already have an idea in your mind about what it's supposed to look like. So just make sure that your equation matches what you thought it should look like.